Yeah, Coach, uh, you did, I don't think you guys uh, rotated as much on the interior of the defensive line last week. Was, was that more of the tempo of Baylor that kind of dictated that or something you were forced into? Uh, they, they did a good job. I think we could have done a better job of that. Uh, but they did a good job of getting up on the line of scrimmage quickly, even if they weren't snapping it quick. And when they do that, you sometimes have to roll with what you have. And uh, you're right, I, 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 that was one of the regrets we have after the game is wish probably at all positions we could have rotated a little bit more. We uh, had some outside issues that affected that a little bit. Uh, but uh, during the game, you know, obviously we wore out at the end and, and uh, we were getting off the field pretty good in the first half and didn't play a lot of snaps in the third and fourth quarter. That wasn't the case. And uh, at the end of the game, we just kind of ran out of steam. The, the floodgates have kind of opened up a little bit on your defense with West Virginia, Iowa State in the second half against Baylor. Is there like one or two things that kind of have been a trend in all three of those? Yeah, and, and, and the trend is that we, you know, you know, I got to do a better job, bottom line. But, uh, you know, we, a lot of times it's a lot of guys doing the right thing and maybe one guy with a mental error or one guy uh, that's not situationally aware of what's happening. And I think that moving forward, we just have to continue to place a premium on execution. You know, I got to do a better job of getting guys in good spots and, you know, when I'm able to do that, they've got to be able to, to turn out and make plays. And, and uh, you know, obviously that's easier to do when you're fresh. And uh, it's kind of wasn't the case on Saturday. I know this might be a conversation that's a week too early, but a lot of the seniors on this year's team that play a lot are on the defensive side of the ball. Have you thought about how much you're going to re-recruit some of these seniors once the season finishes? Uh Privately, I've thought about it. Uh, we haven't had any discussions with these guys. Um, I think that's the program philosophy is we don't think that's fair to do to them. Uh, we're not trying to pressure these guys. I think that uh, um, a lot of guys probably have some thoughts of what they're going to do. I uh, hope to get all of them back. I uh, love these guys, love coaching them. I think they're buying into what we're doing. And, um, you know, we'll see where that is in, in a couple weeks. Thanks, Coach. John. You no, know, I was wondering the penalty that gets called on they're late in the game, so the third down stop. I how did you feel about it? And is that something you're trying him to do currently in that scenario? You were breaking up a little bit. I'm sorry. I apologize. The uh penalty on Khalid that got called yeah. on the third down stop that you have is that is that a play where you're coaching him to do that differently, or is there just not much you can really do about that? You know, when you look at it, he was kind of uh, out of control because he was getting pulled down a little bit. Um, you know, there's some penalties that you get really upset about, and we've made some of those throughout the course of the year that are just dumb penalties. And then there's other ones that we, we would deem as hustle penalties. Um, you know, and in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, that was, that's certainly what he did wasn't malicious. It wasn't um, – you know, I don't know that he could have done a whole lot different, to be honest with you. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, we talk constantly about the target zone of those quarterbacks and how small that is. And um, you can't go high. You can't go low. There's just kind of a small little window of, of space where you can hit a guy. And unfortunately, uh, it was a bad call at a bad moment. You know, if we get that stop, that's probably uh, with a two-score lead, we're probably in pretty good shape with just a little bit of time left to go in the game. You know, and another one was, uh, you know, the late hit on the sideline that was uh, – Actually, the guy was in bounds when, when he hit him. So, uh, but they're overly cautious with some of that stuff sometimes. And, you know, we were, we were on, the, on the bad end of it. But those guys aren't always perfect. And uh, so it's just something you live with. And how much of a help were the linebackers, you know, Cody and, and Daniel getting help back there this week to, to take some snaps away? Oh, huge. I mean, it's uh, – and those guys played their butts off. They played their butts off for, for the last two weeks. Uh, but they've had to go the distance both both weeks. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about 80 snaps in a game, that's hard for anybody to do, especially at that position where you're sideline to sideline all the time and you're chasing around a, a scrambling quarterback. Um, you know, that adds to it. It's one thing if you're just running an A-gap lead or something and you're just uh, stepping downhill. It's another thing when you get a drop and you chase after a guy that's scrambling around and then you run to the ball and, those guys are high effort, high motor guys, and and uh, they just ran out of gas. So having some depth at that position is going to be big. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Lynn, can you hear me, Coach? I can. Oh, I did. They pass one. They sound like a. Hold on, you start over again.
Sounds like we're having some uh, issues there. We'll go on to Derek. Uh, the state yeah, yeah, coach. The last six. Oh. Yeah, coach. Uh, we're just talking about the return of Justin Hughes. Just how big of a difference in communication and performance is it with him and not on the field versus having him on the field? That, that's the biggest thing that he that he brings is got a really good understanding of what we do and his communication. Uh, it's something that we missed a lot, you know. It's something that we miss, uh, um, obviously, against Iowa State with uh, especially the two tight end sets and things that they were in. He would have been uh, really big in that one. Uh, but that, that's what he, he brings. He just brings kind of a piece to everybody. Uh, we, we emphasize communication. It's something that we've got to get better at, but we just don't have a lot of alpha communicators out there. We're working on it, uh, but he's certainly one. And so to have him back in that just makes guys a lot more comfortable around him. I know he got off to a slow start this year, but how good a football has White Hubert played for you guys this year? He's playing really well. I mean, he's he's playing at a at a high level. I mean, he's just, um, and I, I think he can. I think he can still play better, to be honest with you. But but uh, I think his his best stuff is in front of him. But I think he's, uh, um, you know, I don't want to say unblockable, but he's certainly noticeable out there. I mean, he's certainly a force uh, on third down. I think we're seeing a lot of things. Uh, from different offenses that are uncharacteristic of them, uh, keeping tight ends in, keeping backs in, chipping before they release. I mean, that was some things that Baylor never did, and they did it against uh, against us. And that certainly helps the coverage out around them when uh, when they're not getting as many people out in the route. Eventually, I, th I think most of us perceive the heir to his throne will be Khalid Duke. And obviously, there was a lot of rave reviews about him in fall camp. I'm not trying to trap you here, but has he lived up to those expectations and lived up to that hype you kind of built for him? I don't know if that's fair to do to him. Um, he's still a really young player. I mean, he's in his second year. Uh, and he does some things, too, that are very noticeable out there and some very uh, big splash things. And we use him in a lot of different roles. And, um, you know, to say that, that he's uh, Wyatt and, you know, he just doesn't have that amount of snaps. Um, but I, I would venture to guess if he went back and I wasn't here uh, to where Wyatt was in his career at the same time that Khalid is in his career, uh, I would bet Khalid's probably producing as much. Um, he, he's going to be a good one. We've got a lot of good ones in that room. There's some that, uh, that are in that room that, that aren't even playing yet. Uh, Felix Andadike, Nate Matlack. Uh, I mean, there's some, some guys in that room that are going to be big names here in the next couple of years.